So our examples are, are getting progressively more complicated here. Now we have a function that where we, where we have um, two trigonometric functions in this integrand. All right, so I have a choice here. Um, really, with u substitution, the hardest part is what to let u equal. And there is some trial and error there, right? In this one, um, we could let u equal sine of x and then take the derivative and see what we get. If we could, if we could account for our um, cosine to the fourth x dx and that would work. Uh, it would turn out that it wouldn't work for us there. Um, so in this case we want to let u equal the cosine of x. And then when we, when we find the differential of u we notice that it's negative sine x dx. So the reason that I like cosine is because it's the thing that's being raised to an exponent. So I can think of it as it being the more innermost trig function in this in, in our choice here. When I find the differential of u, I get negative sine x, so I can, uh, negative sine x dx. So when I rewrite this, I have u to the fourth. Here's most of the du, but our du is negative sine x dx, so we have to offset that with a negative on the outside of the, of the integrand. And, you, and as you've noticed, hopefully, once we get the proper um, u substitution, once we, once we let u equal the right thing, the integrand itself is really simple. We have a, just a simple polynomial here to integrate. So we find the antiderivative of u to the fourth, here we go, and then we plug this cosine of x back in for u after we've done the integration, and we get negative one-fifth cosine of, uh, to the fifth power of x plus c. Here we have secant of 5x, tangent of 5x, dx. So again, when we look at this, remember that it's 5x is the argument of the secant and the tangent. And if you think secant tangent, that should bring to mind the end result of one of our derivative rules. So that might give you a hint as to where we're headed. I'm going to let u equal the innermost part, so the argument in, in both cases here, the argument of the trig functions are, is 5x. I'm going to let u equal that 5x. And when I take the differential of u, I get 5 dx. That 5 is an extra, so I have to offset that with a 1 fifth. And just by this simple u equals 5x, I have secant u tangent u du with that 5 offset with a 1 fifth. And when I see this, I should recognize that as the end result of one of my derivative rules. Now it's just the antiderivative of secant tangent is secant. So I have one-fifth secant of u plus c, and then I last I substitute that 5x back in for u. So you've noticed in these five examples, when we, f when we find du, it either accounts for everything that's in uh, the, the rest of the integrand, or it accounts for it with some additional factor that we don't really want, a 5 or a negative 1 or a 2 or a 4 or a 3 or something like that. Um, and we can offset that by just having the reciprocal of whatever we got out there um, on the outside of our indefinite integral. So the last example here that we're going to do in, on this page is, is a little bit different. So notice here that I have the integral of x times the square root of 2x plus 1. So if we think about what to let u equal, we want to let u equal the innermost part of this composite function. All right, so I'm going to let it equal 2x plus 1. All right, but what happens when I find du is I just have 2dx. All right, so what I've done is I've accounted for this. I could write this as the square root of u. And this dx here um, gives me a, is accounted for in the du. So I have du, I would need a 1 half there all right, to offset that 2. So I've accounted for this part, the square root of 2x plus 1 dx, 
and I just have to adjust it a little bit with the one half. But I still haven't accounted for this x in the integrand. And I can't just write an x on the outside of the, of the integral. I can't pull an x out. I can pull a factor out. I can factor uh, a 2 or a 1 half out of there, any constant. But I can't factor a variable out of there. So I need some other way to account for or rewrite that x in terms of u. And my u and du do not give me that option. They don't really uh, provide that for me. So what we're going to do is take a look at this expression. If I solve this for x, then I can plug that in for that x there. So I can solve that u equals u minus 1 all over 2. And so what I have here now is I have this written, rewritten in terms of u. So the du was 2dx, and I just really want a dx. So I have the 1 half out here offsetting that 2. The square root of 2x plus 1 is now the square root of u. I've written it here, u to the 1 half. And the x is u minus 1 over 2. So I've gotten that now all into, re rewritten that t integrand all in terms of u. And now I can do the antiderivative. So before I do that, I'm going to distribute. Um, well, I'm, first I'm going to factor this 2 out. So I have not only a 1 half, but a 1 fourth. And then distribute this u to the 1 half to these two terms there. So I get u to the 3 halves minus u to the 1 half. So I'm adding these exponents up. 1 plus 1, one half is 3 halves. And then this is, of course, just u to the 1 half times 1. Now I'm going to do the antiderivative. So I have u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves, which is 2 fifths times u to the 5 halves. And this is likewise u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. So it's 2 thirds times u to the 3 halves plus c. Once I do this, I can make that substitution back for u. So u is 2x plus 1 to find it early in the problem. And I just, oops, sorry, I just make that substitution there. And here, all I've done is I've distributed this 1 fourth through. So I get uh, 1 tenth as the coefficient of the 5 halves uh, term and 1 sixth as the coefficient of the term that's raised to the 3 halves. All right. so. There's, there's several techniques going on here, and, and definitely part of the, the challenge of doing u-substitution is, is getting a feel or having an instinctive feel for what u is going to be, and that really just comes from trial and error and working problems, and you start to see these patterns that come up over and over. Um, keep in mind the end result is whatever technique we use to apply substitution, what we're trying to get is the antiderivative, antiderivative of the integrand. That's what we're trying to end up with. So when I end up here, I should always be able to take the derivative of this and end up with my original integrand x times the square root of 2x plus 1. Or again, here, I had 1 fifth secant of 5x plus c. If I take the derivative of that, I should end up with secant of 5x tangent of 5x. So we can always check it. And that's really the result is what we're trying to do is reverse the chain rule and end up with an antiderivative of the original integrand.